Oh my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Oh my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Oh, all pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of manifested universe. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of manifested he is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. He is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water, only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reaction to the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitravotra. Paramon Nirmatsanam Satam. Paramon Nirmatsanam Satam. Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu. Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu. Shivadam Tapatrayon Mulanam. Shivadam Tapatrayon Mulanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kim Vapurir Ishwaraha. Kim Vapurir Ishwaraha. Sadyo Hidi Avarudya Tetra. Sadyo Hidi Avarudya Tetra. Krite Bihi Susu Subhistakshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama Kalpaturur Galitam Falam Sukamakad Amrita Dravya Samyutam 
Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam Muhur Ahurasika Bhuvi Bhavaka Muhur Ahurasika Bhuvi Bhavaka O expert and thoughtful men relish Srimad Bhagavatam O expert and thoughtful men relish Srimad Bhagavatam The mature fruit of the desired tree of Vedic literatures The mature fruit of the desired tree of the Vedic literatures It emanated, emanated from the lips of Shri Sukadeva Goswami It is emanated Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Even though its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, even its nectarian juice was already relishable. including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Hidiyantak Stobhatrani. We do not Sutam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. The Lord, who is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta preesu abadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Utamasloke Matir Bhavati Naistaki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavu kama loba dayas Chaita Ita Arana Vidam Stitvam Satve Prasiddhiti By development of devotional service one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance and thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam Prasana Manaso Bhagavat Bhakti Yoga Taha Bhagavat Tattva Jigyasa Dvigyanam Mukta Sangha Sichayate When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasam saya shiyante chasya karmani drista evatmanishwari Thus, bhakti yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram, understanding of the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. The Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of God, Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, Verse number 59. Vidras tu tad ascharyam Vidras tu tad ascharyam Nisamya kurunandana Nisamya kurunandana Harsa soka Yutas Tasmad Asha Shoka Yutas Tasmad 
Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Vidura, being affected with delight and grief, will then leave that place of sacred pilgrimage. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Vidura was astonished to see the marvelous departure of his brother, Dhritarashtra, as a liberated yogi. For in his past life, he was much attached to materialism. Of course, it was only due to Vidura that his brother attained the desirable goal of life. Vidura was therefore glad to learn about it, but he was sorry that he could not make his brother turn into a pure devotee. See, that's the thing. He's a liberated yogi, but not necessarily a pure devotee. This was not done by Vidura because of Dhritarashtra's being inimical to the Pandavas, who were all devotees of the Lord. In other words, he didn't purposely make him a liberated yogi, but not a pure devotee. An offense... And it was not liberally... What? That, that sentence again? Um, it, it says, by Vidura, because of Dhritarasa's being inimical to the Pandavas. See, he, didn't, he didn't try and punish his brother by only making him a liberated yogi, but not a pure devotee. He, he didn't do that because Vidura was inimical to the Pandavas. He wanted him to become a pure devotee, but... But he's sorry because... What? Well, he, he was happy. It's about he, he was sorry. But that was not because he was disrespectful to to the Pandavas. That was not done by Vidura because of Dhritarashtra's being inimical to the Pandavas, who were all devotees of the Lord. An offense at the feet of a Vaishnava is more dangerous than an offense at the lotus feet of the Lord. Vidura was certainly very liberal to bestow mercy upon Brother Dhritarashtra, whose past life was very materialistic. But ultimately, the result of such mercy certainly depended on the will of the Supreme Lord in the present life. Therefore, Dhritarashtra attained liberation only. And after many such liberated states of life, one can attain to the stage of devotional service. Yeah, in other words, Bahunam Janmanamante. Vidura was certainly very mortified by the death of his brother and sister-in-law, and the only remedy to mitigate such lamentation was to go out to pilgrimage. Thus Maharaj Yudhisthir had no chance to call back Vidura, his surviving uncle. So we see there's a difference between a liberated yogi and a pure devotee. And second point is the absolutely devastating effect of uh, insulting or uh, being, uh, let's say, inappropriately uh, antagonistic to devotees. One can, Krishna can forgive a, a insult to himself but he's not going to forgive an insult to his devotees. <clears throat> so therefore it says that an offense at the feet of a Vaishnava is more dangerous than an offense at the lotus feet of the Lord. <clears throat> so Vidura was certainly very liberal to bestow mercy upon his brother Dhritarashtra, whose past life was very materialistic. 
But ultimately, the result of such mercy certainly depends on the will of the Supreme Lord in the present life. Therefore, Dhritarashtra attained liberation only. And after many such liberated states of life, one can attain to the stage of devotional service. So we see how special devotional service is. Krishna will give liberation liberally, but he doesn't give devotional service so liberally. It's a special thing. It's only when Srimati Radharani requests Krishna, oh Krishna, look, this devotee has come, he's very humble, he's bowing down to you, please be merciful unto him. So, therefore, in Vrindavan, everyone says Jaya Rade, because they know if Radharani asks Krishna to be kind to the devotee, then he will do it. So, uh, this is a very fine point, and it's the, it's, it, the, the background of this is the verse, Bahanam Janmanam Ante Gyanavam Mam Prapadyante. After many, many births and deaths of striving, eventually, one may come to the position of Vasudeva Saramiti. O Krishna, you are everything for me. But if a person is too much involved in the mechanical process of elevation, rather than devotional service. Can we say that Dhritarashtra was engaged in devotional service his whole life? No. Was he even engaged in devotional service part of his life? Not really. Uh, I mean, he was, he was kind or respectful to a certain degree to Krishna. But in the last days, he admitted to Vidura, he said, I know what I'm going to do is wrong, because Vidura sent, uh, Krishna sent Vidura to Dhritarashtra because he knew he was planning something against the Pandavas. So when Vidura went to see his brother, his brother said, look, I know what I'm planning to do is wrong. I know it, but I can't help myself. You see, that, that is the symptom of a person who's very materialistically uh, contaminated, and because of that, even though they know what is right, they're going to do what's wrong because of weakness, because of strong material attachments. He told me to, I mean, he told him straight to his face, I know what I'm going to do is wrong. I know Krishna doesn't agree with this, but I can't help it. So, this is an extremely dangerous mentality. When you know something is wrong, but still you're hell-bent on doing it. And it, it only brings about tragedy, which what happened to uh, Dhritarashtra. But because of Vidura's mercy to his brother, at least his brother got liberation. Now, now we can see why Chaitanya says, Lord Chaitanya says uh, that uh, Mama Janmani Janmani Swari, I don't even want liberation. I just want your devotional service birth after birth. That means that devotional service is liberation and more. That you can be liberated in the material world through devotional service in a material body, and it doesn't matter anymore. Because by engaging in sincere and, and uh, uninterrupted devotional service, your body is transformed into a spiritual body. Your material senses are transformed into spiritual senses. Therefore, it doesn't matter whether you're in the material world or the spiritual world. In fact, Arjuna's uh, special type of liberation is he's always with Krishna, wherever Krishna is engaged in his pastimes in the material world. That doesn't mean he, he's not in the spiritual world also, but it's, just, it's a special type of liberation that he has. And then you have Narada Muni. He's always preaching in the material world. He can go anytime he wants to the spiritual world, which he does sometimes, but he's always preaching in the material world. That is real liberation. 
wherever you are, material world or spiritual world, you're liberated because you're always engaged in devotional service. So devotional service in the material world and devotional service in the spiritual world are not really different as long as it's pure devotional service. Okay, so uh, this is, a, again, a very important purport. And it says, of course, it was only due to Viduro that his brother attained the desirable goal of life, liberation from the cycle of birth and death. But that is not the highest or best destination. The best destination is pure devotional service. Because it's only by pure devotional service that one can... can uh, let's say, understand Krishna and gain his uh, association. Or So these are verses that say the same thing bhaktiya tvananyaya sakya or purusha sapara parta bhaktiya labya tvananyaya so or bhaktiya mam abhijanati yavanyas chasmitatvata tatamam tatvato yatva vishitetat anantaram so they're all saying basically the same thing so, so let's take a look at this other verse I quoted purusha sapara parta it says, the Supreme Personality Godhead, who is greater than all, is attainable by unalloyed devotional service. Although he is present in his abode, he is all-pervading and everything is situated within him. So this is the 8th chapter, 22nd verse. Very important verse because it's saying the same thing as Bhakti uh, uh, um, as, uh, as the other two verses that I quoted, that is, it's only by devotional service that one can attain the Lord. It's maybe by mystic, uh, by uh, uh, the type of yoga that uh, Jitarashtra did, the mechanical process of elevation, one can attain liberation, but not necessarily uh, the intimate association with the Lord. So, Prabhupada says, it is here clearly stated that the supreme destination from which there is no return is the abode of Krishna, the supreme person. The Brahma Samhita describes this supreme abode as Ananda Chinmaya Rasa, a place where everything is full of spiritual bliss. All the variegatedness manifest there is of the quality of spiritual bliss. Nothing there is material. That variegatedness is expanded as the spiritual expansion of the Supreme Godhead Himself, for the manifestation there is totally of the spiritual energy, as explained in Chapter 7. As far as the material world is concerned, although the Lord is always in His supreme abode, He is nonetheless all pervading by His material energy, so by His spiritual and material energies, He is present everywhere. Okay, anyway, we get the idea that. <clears throat> Liberation is not uh, what you would say the final destination. Final or the supreme destination is uh, intimate relationship with Krishna through devotional service and through the mercy of spiritual masters. Okay, so yesterday I said I was going to talk about something special and uh, which is... Uh, not only special, but it's it's incredibly, uh, let's say, uh, incredibly uh, indicative of Srila Prabhupada's uh, unique position as an Acharya. Okay. So, a, a guest at a program or a, a lecture by Prabhupada asked the question. He says. Brahma Sutra, or the Vedanta Sutra, is propounded by Vyasa, and it is one. 
It is only one. In other words, it's his. He's the author. Right? But after reading Brahma Sutra, the Basyas, meaning the uh, let's let's call them the Basya is the commentary, right? There's Sankaracharya, there's Madhavacharya, and there's Ramanujacharya. They all gave Basyas or commentaries on Brahma Sutra or Vedanta Sutra. And so did Vyasadeva. Vyasadeva's natural commentary is Srimad Bhagavatam. Why they wanted to give commentaries? Well, Sankaracharya gave a false commentary and it became sort of like a standard that if you know if you can't you can't really have a standing in uh, uh, what's called hermeneutics or or commentaries, unless you have a unique, uh, uh, let's say, uh, interpretation. So, his unique inter interpretation is summarized by Brahma Satyam Jagat Mitya. That Brahman is real, and the Jagat or the material world is false. So. This man says, okay, this, so there's these three basyas, Sankara basya, Madhava basya, and, and Sri basya. Uh, and all these things differ in many ways. Now, the, each one of the explanations or commentaries on the same book, Vedanta Sutra, written by Vyasadeva, are different. And he says, am I, am I to follow this one, that one, or the other one? You know, which, which, which commentary should be accepted as, as the true commentary? He says, because jagat is mitya. In other words, the material world is false. It's, it's illusory. Uh, and this is said by Sankaracharya. But Madhavacharya says, it's not mitya, it's realistic. So this is a contradiction between two acharyas. And Ramanuja used another way of explanation, that is... He says, it is and it isn't. <laughs> so he says, and in that way, tava dasa aham. Uh, I am uh, the eternal servant or slave of the Lord. That's Madhavacharya says that, right? I am your slave. And tava dasa aham or tava daso hum. But Sankaracharya says, no, Atma itself is Paramatma. He says that the, the Jivatma becomes Paramatma at one point. So, the, again, he says it's contradictory. One says he's the slave of the Lord or the servant of the Lord. And the other says that he becomes the Lord or he is the Lord. There's no question of this saying, Tavada Soham. In other words, if you read Sankara's Acharya, there's no way that you can skew out of it that the living entity is the eternal servant of, 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 of the Lord. He's, he is the Lord as far as Sankaracharya is concerned. And the same is said by Madhavacharya. He says, Jagat Satyam, Brahma Satyam, Jagat Satyam. And uh, Sankaracharya says, Brahma Satyam, Jagat Mitya. He says that the material world, uh, Madhavacharya says the material world is real. And again, Sankara says the material world is not real. And he says, when Sankara says Jagan Mitya, the same Brahma Sutra, and, uh, by, by commenting on the Brahma Sutra, is taken up by Madhavacharya in a different way. He says Jagat, Jagat Satyam. And Ramanuja says in a different way again. This is all m most confusing. He says, at some stage it's realistic, and at a different stage it's unrealistic. So, in so many factors, I find that there are so many contradictions. If you kindly clarify the matter in a very clear and straightforward manner, I will be, and people will be much obliged to you. So, Swamiji, we will have to say something about this, whether the world is temporary or whether the world is unrealistic or not or is it realistic and if it is realistic why Sankara has said that it's 
illusory. It's, it's, it's an illusion. Why did he say it like that? And Ramanujan says at one stage it's realistic, and after some stage it becomes unrealistic. So then there was a big applause by the audience. And then he said, and therefore I want clarification so that I can understand. Okay, so this is a powerful uh, question is, is posing the Srila Prabhupada. So Prabhupada begins the explanation. He says, Sankaracharya is accepted as Mayavadi because Mayavadi philosophers, they think everything is Maya except their philosophy. <laughs> but actually, if they say everything is Maya, their philosophy is also Maya, right? That's why it's called Mayavadi. And even Krishna is Maya, Prabhupada says, according to them. That's a fact. They don't really believe that Krishna exists, existed. So at Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we belong to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu belongs to Madhvacharya Sampradaya. So now Prabhupada is setting the stage, see? As I have already explained, there are Mahajanas. So all Mahajanas, they have got different Sampradayas. He didn't say different opinions, but different Sampradayas, or disciplic successions. Just like Lord Brahma, he's got his Sampradaya. It is called Brahma Sampradaya. Similarly, Lord Shiva has his Sampradaya. It is called Rudra Sampradaya. Lakshmi has her Sampradaya. It's called Sri Sampradaya. So Shastra says that Shrutayo Vibhina, you hear different types of philosophies, philosophy from different sources. Nacha sav munir yasimatam na binam. One cannot be accepted as a great saintly person unless he puts forward his own theory. Therefore, Mahajana Yena Gita Sapanta, we have to accept the truth by the demonstration of the Mahajan through his practical behavior. Because the truth is, is hidden in his heart. And you can only tell what the truth is by the behavior or by the, the path chalked out by the Mahajan. So he's quoting this verse, Tarko Patista Shrutaya Vibhina. There are uh, you, you can't understand simply by speculation or argument. And because there are different branches of the Vedas. And Nasav Rishi Yeshimatam the Binam. And uh, so every sage or every great Rishi uh, has an opinion. And uh, they not always seem to agree. Dharma sitatvam nihitam guhayam. The truth of uh, spirituality is hidden in the heart of the Mahajan. Therefore, the only solution is Mahajana, Yenagata Sapanta. You can only understand the truth by the path chalked out or taken by the Mahajan. He will reveal, reveal it by his actions. Okay, so in other words, he's saying dry arguments and speculation are inconclusive. You'll never come to a solution by going to this lecture or that lecture, hearing one thing, then hearing something else, or by arguing this way or arguing that way. You'll never understand. The truth is hidden in the heart of a pure devotee or Mahajana. You can only understand by the behavior or the path that the Mahajana takes. Okay, so that is from the Mahabharata. It's a very important verse. So then Prabhupada says, uh, the original source of everything, uh, no, he says that, now, apart from accepting the Mahajana, we have to use our senses also. Of course, unless we are advanced in our sensual speculation, that is, you have to use your senses, but not 
for speculation based on sensuality, based on sense gratification. Uh, that is also not possible, he says. But using your senses through common sense. So he uses this word common sense a lot, a lot. You have to have common sense. That means just uh, you have to be reasonable. You have to think reasonably. So he says, Brahma Satyam. He says, if Sankara says, Brahma Satyam, and Madhavacharya says, Brahma Satyam, right? They both say Brahma Satyam. Then Sankara says, Brahma Satyam, Jagat Mitya. Prabhupada says, let's use our common sense here. If the Brahman, the source of everything, is Satya, the truth, how can what emanates from the Brahman not be the truth? You see? He says, you have to use your common sense. This Jagat is created by Brahman. Now, how do we know that? Janma Dasyayata. Brahma Sutra begins. He says, Atato Brahma Jigyasa. Now let us inquire about what is the absolute truth. And then, that's the, the introduction, right? And then the first sutra is Janma Dasyayata. The absolute truth is that from which everything emanates. Now, what is that from which everything emanates? Vyasadeva's natural commentary on the Vedanta Sutra is Srimad Bhagavatam. And the introduction to Srimad Bhagavatam is Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. That from which everything emanates, that is Vasudevaya, Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Right? And then right away he says, Janbada Seyata. Right? Right? So therefore, the first verse of the Bhagavatam answers the first uh, introductory question of the Brahma Sutra. And then the first answer to that in Brahma Sutra is Janmadasya. And the, fir and the first answer to that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead is Chanba Dasya Yata Nivayad Itaratas Charatesu Abhigya Swara. So, right there, the question has been answered by Vyasadeva himself. Right? So, Prabhupada says you have to have some common sense. If uh, the original source of everything is Janba Dasya Yata, Srimad Bhagavatam 1.1.1, why Jagat? should be mitya. Why should it be an illusion when the source of it is reality? So Prabhupada says, suppose someone has created this microphone with hard labor, and if I say, this is all mitya, this is all an illusion, is it a very good thing? If Krishna has created, Krishna says, aham sarva se prabhava matak sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante maam Buddha Baba Saman Vitaha. He says, Aham Sarva Prabhava. Krishna says, I am the origin of everything. The same answer, Janmada Sayata. Say, the origin of everything is Krishna. And Vyasadeva confirms it, right? In the right in the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam. Who is that person from whom everything has come into existence? So if Krishna is fact, Brahman. Then he says, Aham Sarva Prabhava, I am the origin of everything. How everything that comes from it is going to be false then? You have to use your common sense. No, we do not accept this philosophy, meaning we don't accept what Sankara says. If Krishna is truth, then this world is also truth. It may be temporary. Bhutva Bhutva Paliyate, it's coming and going all the time. Bhagavad Gita 8.19. But it is not untruth. In other words, it is the truth. It is real. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu therefore has criticized Sankaracharya, Prabhupada says. Mayavadi Basya Sunile Haya Sarvanas. If you take the trouble to understand Sankara's Basya, his explanation of Vedanta Sutra, you'll never understand the truth. Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya 6, 169. If you accept Mayavada philosophy, then your progress is doomed, finished. This is a fact. So then Prabhupada says, so we are followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
We do not accept this Sankara's philosophy that the world is mitya or false. No, it is fact. It is fact. But the vision is different. Ah, now what is he? Now he gets to the next point. He's saying Sankara's vision of it is going to be different than the others. But now he's going to explain why. Because the guy asked him a question, right? He said, look, why did Sankara say mitya? Now Prabhupada is going to explain this. You know, this is absolutely brilliant, beyond anybody else's expectations. You know? So he says that, but the vision is different. Vision is different. That is called maya. What is the fact? The fact, this world is created by Krishna or God. Therefore, it is God's property. But we are thinking our property. That is false. See? He says, that is the meaning of Sankaracharyas, that you are thinking that it is your country. No, it is Krishna's country. Ishyavaisham idam sarvam, jatkinja jagatyam jagat, Ishopanishad, first mantra. Everything belongs to Krishna. Why you are falsely claiming that it's yours and fighting and, and going to war, etc. This is false. Not the world is false, but the acceptance of the world falsely, that is false. Not the world is false. So now he's explaining why Sankaracharya says Jagat Mitya. In other words, instead of criticizing Sankaracharya, he's a nonsense, you know, he misled everybody. No, he said, you haven't understood. He's saying things in a little different way. He's saying that your understanding of the world is false, not that it is false. You see, so he's def in a sense he's defending Sankaracharya, and he's done that many times. He said Sankaracharya is also Acharya. He's also uh, a great Acharya. Why? Because he says, and uh, this is not what he he's, he's speaking here, but I'm, I'm adding to it, because Sankaracharya says Narayana. Parovyakta, Narayan is transcendental to the material world. Therefore, he's accepting that Krishna is not a, mater a material production or, or a, 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 Krishna is not Maya. Okay, so he says, the real falsity is thinking everything is our property. So we must have common sense, and again he says common sense, to understand. And I mean to say, understand through other sources also. As Madhavacharya says, no, jagat satyam, the material world is real, that is fact. How you can say this jagat is false? It is not false. Besides that, Vyasadeva, he's the compiler of Vedanta Sutra, and he has commented himself about Vedanta Sutra. That is Srimad Bhagavatam. Basyam Brahma Sutranam. He says, the, he's giving, he, he says that his Srimad Bhagavatam is the Basyam, is the commentary about the Brahma Sutra or, or Vedanta Sutra. And, and Prabhupada says, at the end of each chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, you'll find Brahma Sutrasya Basya. At the end of every chapter of Bhagavad Gita, you'll find. Brahma Sutra Shabasya, right? That this, I'm sorry, every chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam you'll find Brahma Sutra Shabasya. This is the real explanation or commentary on the Vedanta Sutra. So when the author is giving a commentary personally, we should accept that. Why accept others? So Srimad Bhagavatam is the natural commentary given by Vyasadeva. We should accept. And it begins because it is commentary on Brahma Sutra. Therefore, it begins with the Sutra, or Brahma Sutra, Janma Dasya Yata Anvayat Itaratas Chartesu Abhigyaswara. Right from the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, he's answering the original question of the Vedanta Sutra. Right? And what's that original question? Atato Brahma Jigyasa. Uh, let, us, let us inquire into what is the absolute truth. 
and then the second, and then the first sutra is Janba Dasayata. The absolute truth is that from which everything emanates. So now he picks that up right in the beginning. He answers it first of all. He says, "Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya," that the supreme absolute truth is Krishna. And then he says, "Janba Dasayata." So he's picking up right from the Brahma Sutra, from the Vedanta Sutra, because that's that's the that's the answer to Janba uh, Brahma Jigyasas. That from which everything emanates, Janma de Asayata. But, but he answered that right in the invocation. He says, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. You see? So his whole Srimad Bhagavatam is the answer to the original question of the Vedanta Sutra. Now, Janma de Asayata. Is that the beginning of Bhagavatam not Vedanta Sutra? No. He's answering the answering the fundamental question of the Vedanta Sutra by by using the same language. Mm -hmm. He's showing that, hey, when I just said the answer, it's it's Krishna is the Supreme Person, I got it. And he is Janmad Asyayata, that from which everything Emanate. They use the word that from which everything emanates because that is the indefinite language used in the uh, Upanishads, right? The Upanishads don't name Krishna directly. They talk about the supreme, the absolute truth, blah, 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 you see? It's only when you get to Vedanta Sutras getting much closer to what is the absolute truth, but still it's using a little bit, uh, you know, let's, let's say non explicit language like that from which everything emanates but now he becomes definitely clear he says that is Krishna the Supreme so Person they, they, they portray the absolute truth in an impersonal way yeah in, in, in yeah everything everything is impersonal up to the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam and then Bhagavatam finally says it's Krishna, the Supreme Absolute Truth. Okay. okay, because spiritual realization is progressive. It goes progressively. So now he says, uh, this is the explanation. Janbada shayata anvayad itaratas charse vigyas swarat. This is the explanation. So the conclusion is that we Vaishnavas, we do not say that this Jagat is Mitya. No, Jagat is Satya. Unless Jagat is Satya, how we are approaching God, the Absolute Truth, through this material. I mean to say, the, we approach God through the material world. How is it possible? You cannot approach the truth through a false thing. That is not possible. Therefore, our Goswami has concluded uh, Goswami's conclusion is that prapa chinkataya budya hari sambandi vastana mamukshu bihi paritya jo falgo vairagyam katyate bhakti rasamrita sindha 1 2 256. This is the given definition by Sri Rupa Goswami. Prapa chinkataya budya. This world is material, therefore, is false. But Hari Sambandi Vastana, but it has got connection with Hari. Hari has created. Krishna has created. How? It is not without. How you can say without any relationship. If I have created something, it has got relationship. I have got intimate relationship. Therefore, Rupa Goswami says that any creation of Lord, if you think it is material, Prabhachikataya Buddha, Hari Sambandi, because these Mayavadis, they are after Mumuksha. So, Mumuksha Bihi Parityaga, if they are giving up, then Falguva, if they give up the material world is false, then that is incomplete renunciation. Because it's something that can be used in the service of Krishna, and they're not using it in the service of Krishna. Therefore, that's incomplete or not perfect renunciation. 
It is called falyu vairagya, false renunciation. The world is not false, but the so-called renunciation is false. But the real fact is, Rupa Goswami says, Anasakta shavishayan yatarhan upayun jitaha nirbanda krishna sambande yukta vairagyam utshate. Uh, this anasakta shavishayan, we're after sense enjoyment. That is called vishaya. Vishaya means the object of sense gratification. So we should not be very much eager to enjoy. God's creation should be engaged for God's enjoyment, not for my enjoyment. If we are trained up in this way, we can take prasadam. We have got to eat also. But if we think that these things are made for me, I have to eat, that is mitya, or that is false. This is given by God, given by Krishna, so let me offer it to Krishna. Krishna, it is your thing. You first all taste, then I'll take it. Anasakta shivishayan yatarham upayunjitaha. As it is, but your thing should be offered to you, and then I shall take. That is yukta vairagya. That is uh, connecting through renunci proper renunciation, not false renunciation. There are many other things that this kind of uh, false identification, so many mayavadis, they first of all, in other words, he's saying the mayavadis have many other false arguments. Uh, so, so many mayavadis, they first of all say, Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya. But after a few days, again, they come to this jagat and become interested in so called material service because he could not realize Brahman. That is explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Arura Krichena Parampadam Tata Patanti Adyo Nadrita Yusmad Angraha, Srimad Bhagavatam 10 to 32. They may rise up to Param Padam. Brahma Pada, but Anadrita Yusmad Angraya, because they could not take up the service of the Lotus of the Lord, they fall down. They are there are many instances, many sannyasis, they give up this world as false, mitya, and again come to politics, again come to philanthropic work. Why? If Jagat is mitya, why are you coming to politics and philanthropic work? That is Arura Krichena Param Padam Tata Patanti Adya, they fall down again. Again, they fall down. So there are many controversial points in this Prabhupada's summary. It may take long hours, but so far we are concerned. We are Vaishnava. We don't accept that this world is false. No. Everything is meant for Krishna's service. Krishna says, Bhuktaram Yagatapasam Sarvaloka Maheshram. 529 Bhagavad Gita. He is the proprietor and he is the Bhukta, meaning he's the enjoyer. So don't try to enjoy this world. That is false. Everything should be engaged for Krishna. That is reality. So jagat is not unreal. In other words, it's real. Our attitude, our mentality is unreal. That the whole world is for my enjoyment. No. The creator says, aham. I am the enjoyer. Why are you are claiming you are the enjoyer? That is your false claim. So jagat is not false, but our claim to enjoy the jagat, that is false. So we have to convert it. That is enjoyable by Krishna. In other words, convert it or use it in Krishna's service. Then you come to reality. Thank you very much. Amazing, amazing. Who else could speak like this? And he defended Sankaracharya. Even though Lord Chaitanya says he's wrong, yeah, he is wrong, but actually people have misunderstood what he said. He's saying that the desire to enjoy the material world, that's what is false. Okay. Well, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself accepted. He's the one actually who named Sankarachara, Sri Prabhupada Sankarachara. Yeah. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he accepted him because for two reasons. Because of Sankaracharya, the spiritual identity of living entity is being established. Because before the Buddhist used to say Nirvana. So when the Veda was rejected by Lord Buddha, 
He also would also reject the eternal soul. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So Nelson Gancheri established the nature of the soul. So Mahaprabhu said we're building from that. So he, he, he made the foundation. No, again, that's, they're circling back to the absolute truth. After Buddha rejected the Vedas, then they're circling back. So at least Sankaracharya accepted the Vedas, reestablished the authority of the Vedas, but gave it a Buddhist explanation. You see? So therefore, Madhvacharya, Ramanujacharya, they came, and then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to bring it back to the correct understanding. After Sankaracharya reestablished the authority of the Vedas, yeah. in two ways, about the Mahaprabhu accepted that. He said, actually, we are, in one sense, Mahaprabhu said, we follow the Sankaracharya. Not in the, in the sense of, uh, of uh, Jagad Mitya, but in, 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 the, in the platform of the soul. Because Sankaracharya did that job. Mahaprabhu said this. I think Chaitanya Chaitanya. Uh, okay, you find that and tell us tomorrow. Uh, Then Mahaprabhu himself accepted. And then also, it is said that it's because of the order, he did that job by the order of the Supreme Lord. Yes, Sankaracharya was ordered yeah. by Narayana to uh, mislead the people. And in one sense, he has no fault. And uh, throw the Buddhists out of India. No, he doesn't have But it's very interesting that uh, Prabhupada Sanyas Guru, uh, Keshava Maharaj, he really blasted Sankaracharya. He thought he was the, he's a rascal. <laughs> but see, Prabhupada doesn't say he's a rascal. He, he, says, he says he's a charya. He had, he had a difficult task. Right? Anyway, what's, imp what's, what's important here is the way Prabhupada answered this yeah. question. Yeah, that's amazing. It's amazing. No one else can give an answer like that. Well, it's liberation, it's mukti. It could be mukti on the higher planetary systems in the material world, or it could be mukti in Brahman realization. Right? Uh, there's different levels of mukti. So it doesn't say, it'll say it somewhere else. It'll say somewhere else. You have to keep reading. But it says, yeah, it's definitely clear there's a, there's a difference between liberation and pure devotional service. Yeah. yeah. No, no, look, the, the key here is spiritual life is progressive. So you don't get into Vaikuntha, and especially you don't get into Goloka easily, right? And, and the verse that explains that, it's quoted, it's the verse in the Bhagavatam, but it's quoted in the Ishopanishad also. Just find it. Where... We're talking about the, the uh, gopas. And it says, I think it's the 14th, the purport, the 14th mantra. It says that the gopas attained their, their position of being able to... Uh, have their head on the Krishna's lap and dangling their feet in the air and, and playing a leapfrog with the Lord, all those things. After many, many births, 
and many, many lives of performing devotional service, they finally attained that, that very special position of the intimate relationship with the Lord. So it's not a normal thing. It's not like A, B, C, D. It, it takes a long, long time of devotional service in different situations with the Lord to come to the point where you can become an intimate uh, associate of the Lord in the spiritual world. Itam satam brahma sukhanu brutya dasyam gatanam para daivatinel maya shritanam naradara kena sakam vijaru krita punya punja. It's the Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, 12th verse, 11th, 12th chapter, 11th verse. The personality of Godhead, who is perceived as impersonal, blissful Brahman by the jnanis, who is worshipped as the Supreme Lord by devotees in the mood of servitorship, and who is considered an ordinary human being by mundane people, played with the coward boys who had attained their position after accumulating many pious activities. Many pious activities. So Dhritarashtra, yeah, he, he heard Bhagavad Gita, you're correct. And he personally saw Lord Krishna, correct? But uh, he also not only, uh, he also tried to kill the Pandavas, right? So therefore, he's not going to go back to Goloka, but, he's, but he attained liberation from the cycle of birth and death. Well, isn't that what Prabhupada says? Let's, let's look at it here. The exact wording is, but ultimately the result of such mercy, meaning Vidura's mercy, certainly depended on the will of the Supreme Lord in the present life. Therefore, Dhritarashtra attained liberation only. And after many such liberated states of life, one can attain to the stage of devotional service. And after many... See, you notice that stage. And after many such liberated states of life, one can attain to the stage of devotional service. See? So, and here it says that uh, the cowherd boys had attained their position after accumulating many pious activities. So it's, it's, it's actually a long process. Well, we have to. So the Lord Chaitanya says, uh, "John Mani, John Mani, uh, John Mani." He's not. He doesn't even want liberation. He just wants to serve the Lord in devotional service. So when we come to that point, where we're not really interested in liberation either, we simply want to engage in devotional service. That can be in hell, or that can be in the spiritual world. So then, then. That is the mentality by which you can go back to Godhead. Could you just add with what you said about the association with pure devotee? So obviously, one achieved bhakti, uh, pure devotion by association. And that's what you said. Yeah. So could you say that, argue that you can associate pure devotee, and then you when you commit offense to kill the book, then you can never achieve that goal of the pure devotion. The well, you, you see, everything is progressive. So that's why it said here, Vidura was certainly very liberal to bestow mercy upon his brother Dhritarashtra, whose past life was very materialistic. But ultimately, the result of such mercy certainly depends on the will of the Supreme Lord in the present life. Therefore, Dhritarashtra attained liberation only. And after many such liberated states of life, one can attain to the stage of devotional service. See, Krishna does not give devotional service easily. He'll give liberation easily. There's a verse like that. He'll give you liberation, but not devotional service. 
because through devotional service, Krishna becomes vulnerable to the devotee. He'll, 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 he'll due to the love of the devotee, he'll drive his chariot, for example. Or many other examples are there where he subordinates himself to the devotee because of devotional service. So therefore, he's not going to give devotional service easily. Yes. So it's given that the desire for the devotion is given. What you can do. The question is to do it. How you can understand it. It's only through the association of pure devotees. You see. It's only because of Vidura. If it wasn't for Vidura, he would have had a very dark future. Rajarasa would have had a very dark future. Vidura changed his destiny by sharp words and shook him out of his stupor of uh, sense gratification. And then he became determined in the last minutes of his life to be very serious. He, he lost his attraction to his wife. You know, she accompanied him because she's a chaste wife, but he was not, he didn't say, come along, or I'll help you. Or, no, he ignored her and just went into a deep state of meditative state. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. Well, let's see what he says. Uh, Vidura was therefore glad to learn about it, but he was sorry that he could not make his brother turn into a pure devotee. Well, yeah. Wouldn't you be sorry if you can't turn your children into pure devotees? Huh? You can give them Krishna consciousness, but you might not be able to turn them into pure devotees. But you turn them into devotees, okay. Uh, so that, that means, you know, it's after many, many lifetimes. Bahunam janmanamante, gyanavam mam prapadyante, vasudeva sarvami. That one accepts Krishna as everything for one's life and, and loses all interest in anything else. It's a very rare thing. Samahatma Sudurlaba. Sudurlaba is very rare. One comes to that position. So we have to come to that decision and position. Then we can convince other people. But even but it all depends on Krishna ultimately, say. Vidura would have liked for his brother to be a pure devotee. <laughs> you don't you never given the answer. Yeah. Because it all depends on the will of the Lord. Yeah. Vidura couldn't do more, more than He's not the controller. Krishna is the controller, right? And Krishna obviously is not going to let, let it go that he insulted the Pandavas and tried to kill them. But still he got mercy. But to get the full mercy, you know, it's a very high bar, right? <laughs> How do you both? No, ultimately. So th that's what Prabhupada says here uh, about vision. He says you have to have common sense and understand through other sources also. So then he says, Madhavacharya says, Jagat Satyam. That's a fact. How, how can you say that Jagat is false? It's not false. And then he talks about Vyasadeva. But before that, he mentioned that, you know, uh, even Sankaracharya, he said, we don't accept the Sankara's philosophy that the world is false. No, it's a fact. But the vision is different. Vision is different. That is called Maya. What is the fact? 
the fact is this world is created by Krishna or God, therefore it is God's property. But we are thinking our property. That is false. That is the meaning of Sankaracharyas, that you are thinking that it is your country. No, it is Krishna's country. So, you know, at the end, Sankaracharya says uh, that Bhaja Govinda, right? So he had to give a Buddhist interpretation of the Vedas to convince some Buddhists to become uh, followers of the Vedas and the ones that didn't uh, basically kick him out of India. Yes. It's all to come back to the original understanding. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Yeah. So, that it, you know, they circled back slowly through these different basyas coming to finally Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's one amazing thing that Prabhupada said there is that the way he's playing Jagat Mitya, that's a fantastic What did he say? What did he say? Um, it's a fantastic the way he, he interpret, Prabhupada interpret the Jagat Mitya. That is a vision. It's a consciousness. Of yeah, what, what, is, what is the mitya? And mitya is thinking this world belongs to me. But that's what I'm saying. The way yeah. Prabhupada said that, that's yeah. exactly what I'm saying. It's amazing. Yeah. So it said, therefore... No, the, because the doctrine of illusion between the Mayavadis and Vaishnavas is different. Mayavadis say the whole world is false. The, uh, the uh, Vaishnavas say wanting to enjoy the material world is false. The material world is not false. It can be used in the service of Krishna. But, but they want to understand is that they might, they might, the followers of Sankara, Sankaracharya, they didn't understand that also themselves. That's why he said, but Bhaja Govinda. Yeah. So Jagadmita means the consciousness of enjoying. Yes. So they, don't, they, don't, they didn't understand him, you see. Yeah. They didn't understand him. And they think, they, they, they think to be followers, but they didn't understand him. Well, everything needs to be explained by the Acharya. But in on the face value, saying that Brahma Satyam Jagat Mitya, that's that's wrong. But the, to explain that Mitya is when we falsely claim the material world as meant for our enjoyment. That is the that's real false. Yeah. yeah, that's Maya. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So Sankaracharya was right because when he said uh, what's called? Brahma Satya. Yeah, Brahman is truth and the Jagat is false, but the false understanding of Jagat. Yeah. So there you can see there's a sense that if you engage in devotional service, No, you have to question the Guru because, you know, common sense can, says that if the Jagat, uh, if the Brahman is truth, how can the jagat be false? Because it emanates. Right. But see, Sankaracharya said it doesn't really emanate, it's an illusion. So that's, that's the pivot right there. We don't say that uh, the material is false. We say that it's temporary. Therefore, it's not of the nature of sat. Right? Eternal. So anything that is not it doesn't appear eternal it, it, because it disappears at one point. So, therefore, you have to question the Acharya because there's some doubt. You know, the common sense of, well, if Brahman is real, how can what emanates from Brahman be false? And then, but so, Sankara Acharya said, well, uh, it's actually an illusion. No, but what is the illusion? Say, you have to ask these questions. What is the illusion? Is it the, is it the matter itself is an illusion? Or is it the thought that uh, I can use this matter for my sense of gratification? Unless you ask these questions, you end up with a false re understanding. Therefore, it says, tat vidi paripatena paripasnena sevaya. Say so you have to ask questions to clarify Okay, so we'll have it. if at the end of the class there are no questions, 
That means either you understood or you didn't understand. 